Hey, what's up guys? Kobe Cheese here, and I'm going to be doing a solo queue commentary. This time I'm going to be playing some Pantheon. I did tell you guys that I have been enjoying Pantheon since the most recent patch, so I haven't actually had time to put together a full guide for him yet, since that does take a little bit more time, but I did want to bring you a solo queue commentary of me playing around with him, and that way you can kind of just see how I play him for a full game. I chose this game because I actually made a lot of mistakes in this one. I was kind of tired uh, when I played it, and I just wasn't making very much good decisions. But I think I did fairly well overall, so I can show you some good, and I can show you some bad, and tell you what to do and what not to do when you're playing Pantheon. Now, generally when you pick Pantheon, you want to make sure that you can at least win your lane or at least neutral your lane. In other words, you don't want to lose, right? Well, that's obvious with any champion. But the important thing to do when you're playing is pay attention to the picks. If you are one of the last Better picks and you get to do this, it's a little bit easier as long as you have a choice in the matter anyways. If you're gonna be going against someone like Udyr, obviously it's gonna be really hard to win the lane as anyone. So, I mean, Pantheon, I guess is just as good of a pick as any, but at the same time, you just wanna make sure that you're not going up against a lane you can't win. So if you are Pantheon and you have like a Janna and you're going up against like a Taric and a vein, you're probably not gonna win your lane and you most likely won't get hardly any farm at all. But if you have someone like Alistar with you in your lane, or you have someone like, in this case, Soraka, which we're versus, th they actually had a really wor weird team comp. It's not something you would normally see. Uh, apparently the other team decided to pick up lots of AP champions, and what ends up happening is they send the Vigar down bottom. That's not necessarily bad since they have the Soraka to heal him up. You know, I can throw spears at him and poke him down pretty low, but if I get too aggressive, he'll just throw down his shield and stay back for a little bit while Sora while Sona heals him up. Now, the cool thing is that I can take some poke as well, and Soraka can heal me up, although once he hits six, he's gonna be really bursty, and Soraka heals aren't gonna be as effective because they're more for sustain than they are for, hey, I'm gonna save you from dying instantly. Which is what, uh, which is what Vigar does. In any case, I know that I'm gonna have a pretty easy lane. I am not concerned about my lane really at all. So this is a fairly easy early game for me, and I'm just gonna try and farm as much as possible. The whole point of your early game, I mean, I could potentially be walking over there and zoning out the Vigar and throwing spears at him the entire time. But I prefer to do my best to not miss any creep kills. I actually do miss a few creep kills, and that's something I'm working on. You know, everyone's not perfect. So, in any case, any chance I do get, I do want to throw my spears out, especially when I'm playing with a Soraka. She'll be able to lend me lots of mana. So I'm just gonna run up, throw spears if I can, and try and last hit. Don't miss any last hits just to throw a spear or something at the enemy. In fact, I'd rather throw a spear at a creep to get a last hit than throw a spear at the enemy to miss a last hit, if that makes any sense. The whole idea is to build your items up, get strong enough that you can jump around the map and go kill people. Now at this point in the game, we've kind of pushed up a little bit far. It wasn't really my intentions to push the lane. That's just what happened. And the sad part is that I know that Warwick will be coming to gank soon. Anytime you start off on purple side and you're on bottom, you know that their jungler most likely is going to come and try and gank you soon. Here's my mistake. I kind of knew that, but I decided to go aggressive onto that Vigar anyways. And then... The Warwick, as expected, comes out to try and kill Soraka, and I, what I do is I get greedy, try and get in range to uh, kill the Vigar, I get stunned, and then in order to save Soraka, I have to burn my flash to get close enough to him to stun him and keep him from killing her. So that sucks. I, I blow all of my cooldowns, and now we're a little bit low HP. I'm not worried about dying since Soraka will just heal us up, and I'm going to sit here at the tower and farm. Uh, in a lot of cases, you would want to go back right here, and you wouldn't want to stay around for the farm, but, you know, I'm not worried about it. If they try and go on me, I'll just stun them. Soraka will heal me up. They don't have a lot of dive potential based on their levels and whatnot, and plus, here comes the Scarecrow trying to do a little bit of action. He's not level 6, so I don't expect him to jump in or anything like that. I'm just going to continue to farm. I think what he's trying to do... From what I can tell is just push him out of lane, maybe pop some flashes. I don't have flash and I don't have mana. So there's not really a lot of point for me to go down there. I continue to farm my creeps and that's really the best I can do. After I kill these few minions here, I'm going to go back to the base most likely and see if I can buy some items.
Ideally, you would want to farm up until you can afford a brutalizer and some brown boots. Also, if I wasn't starting with someone who healed so much, I would actually start with brown boots and three health potions. But in any case, I'm able to get a brown boots and one long sword, so that's what I do. And I know that I'm going to go for my brutalizer next. So I get back to the lane here and just continue to farm and do any poke that I possibly can, which is not too effective. Again, they have a Sona. It's not really in your best interest to go against somebody who's really sustainable as Pantheon because you want to go for those quick kills and so many times if you play pantheon against someone like that it's really hard to do that but either way i just noticed that the fiddle sticks is nearby so i go in onto that vigar and stun him put down my qss or sorry not my qss but my uh heart seeker strike and am able to take him out with the assistance of a nice placed fear so there we go, that's one kill for us. Unfortunately, I didn't get the kill, so that kind of sucks. Good Usually, on Spathlon, you want to get all the kills. The more fed you get, the better it is for you guys and, you know, as the game goes on. The cool thing about the new Pantheon is that he doesn't really taper off as much as he used to, and he still has a pretty good early game. And that's due in a lot of reasons, just because his spear does so much damage now. Anyhow, I'm going to stand here in the lane. As much as possible, I will poke down the Sona if she tries to come in. I do notice that Akali tries to go in for our Soraka, so I'm going to stun her. Giving Soraka a little bit more time to get away. I don't know if she can make it. I'm pretty sure that she's going to flash in. There we go. She does go in for the kill. I don't think I can kill her, but I see that Brand's coming from that top, so I'm going to just try and keep my vision on her and throw down some spears. I see that Viger's coming in, and I'm just going to get out of there. I have no mana. There's no reason for me to stick around. It would be absolutely pointless. Unfortunately for me, man, I get a lot of focus onto me. Uh, at this point, I should have actually flashed over the other oh side of the God. wall. I thought that Bran was going to uh, focus onto Viagar. Instead, for some reason, he tried to focus on someone else, and therefore, we end up giving Viagar a double kill. Pretty bad move on both of our parts, to be perfectly honest. I wish I had known that was going to go that way, and I would have just not followed Akali at all to begin with. Either way, that gives them two kills and a dragon, so that's a really bad play on our part. For the next little bit, I know that I need to just play it a little bit safer and try not to make any crazy plays. I don't want to feed the Vigar anymore. They do have that dragon, and he does have those two kills, so they're going to be a little bit up ahead from that. Not too bad. We are even overall, and Vigar is the one with the kills, and I'm not too concerned with that since we can eventually counter that out with some magic resist now based on their team composition i know that i'm going to have to rush some magic resist most of their dp pretty much all of their dps is all magic based so if our team all gets magic resist then we'll be able to counter them out quite nicely and that's another good thing that we have soraka so we just kind of need to get to late game i imagine that early on we're going to have a little bit of a problem i noticed that up top on the mini map my team is kind of baiting them out, so it's a good deal. I looked like the Fiddlesticks jumped in with an ultimate and was able to kill them. I'm just going to continue farming down here as much as possible. I want to build up my Merc Treads. Usually I'll go for Berserker Greaves so that I can get in there and uh, just auto-attack people down as much as possible. However, in this case, I don't need to do that. I just need to be able to live long enough to just do a combo or something like that onto an enemy. Because with Vigar, he's going to instantly blow somebody up. And if I can get out of that stun with my Merc Treads, that's going to help out immensely. I'm probably going to build up my Ghost Blade and then jump into a... Uh, and actually, if you notice there, I... Uh, <laughs> I saw, I saw that Vigar got a little bit close, and this is what I do when I'm in the laning phase. Someone gets just close enough for me to throw down a full combo on them, I'll put that in. And what I did was I forced him out of the lane, which gives me an easier time farming, and then I'm going to do the same thing to Sona to try and push her out of the lane, and possibly even do a little bit of tower hits. Now, Vigar was able to get back before I can push him out of the lane, but it doesn't matter. I got some good farm in, so... I was able to pick up my Merc Treads. Usually I'll go for Ghost Blade before I finish my boots. However, in this case, since I am playing against a Vigar, I do my boots first. And if you notice there, the Fiddlesticks is pretty stupid. I told him to wait. I was going to jump in and help him kill that Vigar. Instead, he tries a 1v2 and easily gets destroyed. So that was kind of a bad play on his part. I don't know if he thought that my ult was global, but it obviously is not anymore. I do have to get in range. Either way, I'm just going to stick around and continue doing what I've been doing, which is trying my best to get some farm up. I like to get some early kills in this game, but since Vigar's stun has been so disruptive, 
to me, continue my combo. It's been really difficult to do so in addition to Sona heals keeping him up. Not too bad on their part to have that. Now here we go, I see the Fiddlesticks is going to be coming in for a potential gank onto one of them. And so I'm gonna get ready for that. I'm gonna try and push his lane as quick as possible. Oh no, it looks like Vagra actually saw him, probably had a ward there, but Sona, I'm gonna catch her coming in and try and put a little damage on her. She flashes out, so we do waste one of those flashes. That's gonna be good. And I'm just gonna, it looks like the Fiddles is gonna go in for a bush gank. I don't know if they didn't realize that was about to happen or if they just don't know how dangerous it's going to be. But I know that as soon as he starts his ultimate, I can jump in onto somebody. I'm going to take out Sona, no problem. I can just jump right onto her with that fiddle ultimate. And he's going to go down. Vigar cannot stay around. And we are going to be able to pick up this tower. Maybe. I'm not sure. Here comes Warwick in just the right time to help a, help out at the tower. And it's probably not really safe to dive with the, with the two stun potential they do have. We're just going to stick around and see if we can make anything happen here. And there we go. We're going to fear that Warwick. And unfortunately, we're not able to kill him. And he goes back. But for some reason, the brand decides to dive 1v3 versus their entire team. Pretty bad move on his part. A little too greedy. And then we're going to go for this tower and try and get it down. But it has one hit left. We just can't get it. And Soraka stays around too long. Gets caught in a couple of uh, attacks. She's able to flash out before she dies. But I have to burst down a little bit of my HP to stun them just to keep myself alive. I wasn't seeing the fiddlesticks going for the kill here and I didn't really like it. I tried to flash in but a perfectly laid stun uh, gets stuck right where my flash goes in and he flashes out. So overall pretty bad play. I don't like what happened there. It was kind of just a bunch of bad coordination on everybody's parts and so we all have to get out of there. And they're probably going to put down a little bit of damage on our tower. I'm sure that Bran will be able to hold it off. He does have some good AoE. I'll be able to pick up my Ghost Blade in the meantime. So that should help out a little bit. Um, actually, I may go for... Yeah, that's right. I decided to go for my Giant's Belt first here. And the reason for that is that I haven't been getting a lot of kills. And I wanted to get that Gold for 5 to at least get a few ticks in before I turn it into a ghost blade and then that giant's belt will help me quite a bit to survive if Vigar tries to put some burst down onto me and that's kind of my Good goal here is down. to be a little bit more survivable I I can kill him extremely easy I don't need extra damage to kill Vigar all I need to do is get past that stun and then continue attacking him right now that Vigar does have the double buff from our brand I believe and so we're gonna have to be really careful Soraka just barely keeps himself alive we go in there we take out Sona and I don't know why they stopped chasing here this was gonna be an easy kill for us but everybody just backs off and I was not expecting them to be such wimps and therefore you know I should have probably attacked the tower it only had about one hit left on it but I wasn't watching that tower HP. I was just kind of annoyed that everybody stopped chasing with me tanking the tower. Either way, you can call it a bad dive on my part because I wasn't paying attention. So what I should have done there is one of two things, either attack the tower or not dove. And that would have, both of those would have effectively gotten me the kill. Here you go, looks like Fiddle is gonna jump in, not really make anything happen. He kind of was not in good range there. I decided to go ahead and farm up a little. Now that we've taken our tower, I'm less needed in the bottom lane and I can focus on getting kills in other places. So what I like to generally do on Pantheon is pick up that red buff. It helps me keep people slowed down until I'm able to pick up a frozen mallet later on. So we're going to push back this top lane here, go for that red buff, and see what I can make happen elsewhere on the map. So anyways, my spider senses were tingling here, and I actually saw that Vigar on the mini-map before the Brand did, because, you know, this Brand has no awareness. Tried to jump in to help him out, but unfortunately the Brand did not even pay attention and just let him walk up and kill him. So it kind of wasted my ultimate in an attempt to make something happen there. Unfortunately now, that Vigar is getting quite fed due to just... You know, so lack of coordination on our team's part. And that's going to be a problem later on. He will be just exploding people. Alright, now I kind of noticed they're going for the dragon. And usually whenever the enemy team goes for dragon, you need to immediately assess some things in your mind. Do you have enough teammates around to help out? If not, just let them have it. Here we go. Soraka tries to 1v3 or 1v4 the enemy team, which is probably the most retarded thing of seen in a very long time 
It's really simple to see that Singed and Fiddle Six are both top. Brand was dead coming from base, and so I had no oh, ultimate to jump in seen. due to trying to help Brand. Therefore, there's absolutely no way we could have made anything happen. And then Fiddlesticks tries to go in and one before them afterwards. And I should have known this was a bad idea, which I did. But I thought, you know, maybe he can make something happen, which he didn't. And instead, I get caught, waste my flash in the meantime. And we end up losing Soraka, myself, and overall a dragon. So really bad play by everybody there. I think that that could have been a lot better off if Soraka had not gone in, but she essentially baited us into going to a bad fight one person at a time. So at least Fiddlesticks got away, you know, and, you know, unfortunately I was one that got caught in that, and the whole time I was thinking, man, this is a terrible idea. But they're able to pick up that tower now, and they have a pretty significant lead on us. Lots of fed, you know, kills onto Vigar and a two tower advantage as well as that dragon. Now we are a few kills ahead, so that's fine. I think that the one saving grace here is that Vigar is the only one with all the kills, whereas ours are kind of spread out throughout our team, making us stronger in team fights. We just have not had a team fight yet. This is pretty much the point where a lot of people will really get discouraged and pissed off at each other and start calling names, and that's what you really cannot do because, again, I just said it, Vigar is the one fed. If you take him out or deal with him, then you'll always win your team fights. We do have a pretty good team fight composition. We've got nice AoE with Brand and with Fiddlesticks, so we just need to keep that going. So we take the opportunity here to pick up a pretty early Baron. It's not too hard to do with Fiddlesticks tanking that since he can just get healed by Soraka and use his drain to keep things going. So that's a really good win for us. That pretty much puts us in the lead, getting that Baron very early like that. Unfortunately, the Singe goes in and kind of gets caught in a bad spot. And luckily the Brand has his flash up after getting ulted by the Warwick. He's able to flash out. So four of us now have the buff for Baron. That's a really good thing there. And we just need to continue playing smart. I think that I'm going to be rushing my QSS pretty soon. I'm not sure if I'll get my Frozen Mallet first or not. But most likely I'll get that QSS because I need to have a way out of Vigar stun and or out of the stun from Warwick. So I'm going to go ahead and use my ultimate. I want to get down here and not lose any of this farm. My big thing right now is that I want to get as much CS as possible. And I don't know if that ult was necessarily the best thing to do. But at the same time, uh, again, that is kind of my goal right now is to just get ahead as much as possible since I am behind in kills. Only one kill at 27 minutes on Pantheon. Not really the best thing overall. So I'm going to pick up this blue buff, or I may give it to Fiddlesticks. I really like it. Blue buff is very strong on Pantheon because he is essentially a AD caster. Yeah, actually, I do pick up the blue buff. He's like an AD caster. He's got such short cooldowns on his spells, and he relies... Most of his damage is on spamming his abilities. So having that blue buff is really nice and very useful to have that. I see that the Singed is really going nuts over here trying to make something happen and engaging into the fight. And then there goes the Fiddlesticks, not really catching anyone, just kind of flashes around and misses everything that he has. This is where it would have been nice to have my ultimate so I could have got in there. I wasn't in range to really even be in that fight. They started it before I can get there. And so I'm just going to run out behind. Luckily for me, Warwick stays around for just a little bit too long. I'm able to stun him. He gets flipped by Singed and we take him out. This gives us a chance to take the tower and probably go all the way to the inhibitor based on the amount of kills. And we do see that Mordekaiser is up top, so that will give us a free inhibitor since he's going to be trying to go for that tower. I'm fine with that. That's a fair trade to me. I will take an inhibitor over a outer tower any day. So there's no way Akali and Vigar can stop us from doing this. We are all five, none of us are dead, and we're going to be able to easily just teleport out and go stop him later. We'll probably pick up a dragon after this as well, and that's not going to be too big of an issue at all. And there we go, Singe is getting caught a little bit. Not really worried about that. I don't want to start a fight here. I'm just sticking around in case I need to stun someone so he can get away. A lot of times on Pantheon, I see if someone gets caught, I'll try and stun them and continue running. That helps my teammate run away. I see that Mordekaiser's is running around here. I'm going to try and get him caught. I want to get a kill here. So this is kind of like a greedy ultimate. And I want to I want to get in on this. So 
I don't usually do stuff like that, but at the same time, I really, really wanted to get a kill. Probably not the best. I used my ultimate, and what ended up happening was, well, Fiddle Six dies. I use some cooldowns, and we don't even kill him. But luckily, the Sona is really bad, and she just runs up, gets caught. We kill her. Vigar gets two more kills. He's just blowing people up instantly. There we go. Brand and Fiddle Six both dead now, and I'm just trying to stun and call it here to help get away. We can probably kill her if she gets too aggressive on us, so I'm just going to stay back. I know not to be stupid and keep chasing her, because she will just kite forever. And I don't want to run into Vigar again, even though if he did come up and I had my cooldowns ready, I would easily take him out. So, either way, I'm just going to step back here and go ahead and be like, Come on, guys, let's, uh, let's just group up and be safe again. So, as you can see, we've been making a lot of mistakes just letting this Vigar have his way with our team by getting baited and things like that and I you know I, this is just one of the games I wanted to show you where I was actually making a bunch of retarded Do choices where you know I was kind of getting greedy in a lot of cases and not not paying attention so uh, either way it should uh, should be a lot better now that I've got my quick silver sash that way if I get stunned Good by either Warwick job. or by the Vigar I'll be able to easily just cleanse my way out of it and continue my assault. So I've got my ultimate ready here and I see that they're going for that dragon and so it doesn't seem like the enemy team's around therefore I'll pick up my red and if the enemy team does come I'll be able to jump into that fight no problem. Uh, so it looks like they scouted dragon. Dragon was actually down. I'm not sure what Singe is doing. I try and tell him hey man don't fight don't fight get back get out of there but for some reason Singe really wants to 1v4 their team so I don't like what he's doing there. He's trying to, I don't know, keep them busy so that we can do Baron, but that's not what we're doing. We're kind of trying to just pick up our buffs and we'll do Baron when it's up, which is not yet. We'll see. So he's still alive, but he's still in a bad position. I really don't like what he's doing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and ward up this area and see if I can potentially pick up a blue buff. I noticed that the Mordekaiser is a little bit out of position there, so I and that since Singe is coming around behind, I'm probably going to go help him out rather than pick up this blue buff because I can always go get that later. And there we go, we're going to jump onto him, I'm going to throw my spear, jump onto him with my stun. That's the combo you want to do, spear, stun, auto attack, and then use your Heartseeker Strike, and then auto attack and try and throw one more spear. Unfortunately, we couldn't do just enough damage, and we ended up taking more damage in the process. And here we go. Bran picks up the blue. I'm okay with that. Bran with the blue is probably a little more useful than I am. So that actually worked out better. Hopefully, our fiddle six doesn't get caught here. He's able to flash out. Unfortunately, you don't want to waste a flash on a fiddle six, though. So that ends up just being bad positioning on his part. Singe goes in for a toss, and I don't really like getting caught here. So another kill for that Vigar onto our Soraka. And I noticed everybody in here fighting. I didn't want to fight. I was trying to tell them to back up, but they went for it anyway. So I'm going to jump in. And unfortunately, that was kind of a bad positioning on my jump. I still haven't got the timing down right on all the jumps, so wasn't able to make anything happen there. I'm trying to get to this Vigar, but with Sona's smooth speed buff, I'm not able to catch him. Therefore, I say, what the heck, I'm just going to jump onto Sona instead. I will be able to take her out, no problem. There we go, picking up a kill on her, and looking at my HP, I'm just going to back the heck out of there, and hopefully Singe will do the same thing. And I don't think he will, because Singe is balls to the wall, and he's probably going to end up dying a little bit. And I see Warwick over here. I don't think I can 1v1 him, but he has a little bit low mana, and that tower is about to go down. So if he stayed around, I could have probably picked up a kill with the help of Brand. And there we go. Yep, Singe does die. He sticks around. Let's Vigar have yet another kill. So he's just doing terrible this game. I have enough money to pick up my Phage, and I pretty soon will have that Frozen Mount as well. That, in addition to my Quicksilver Sash, should give me a little bit of resistance against all of that magic damage. The good thing about this team here is that I can build magic resist. The only thing I don't like about that is that I can't build as much damage because with this particular build, what I end up doing is going usually for a Ghost Blade and then a Frozen Mallet and then an Atmos. That allows me to get a lot of extra damage from that extra HP. In this case, I'm going to build my Frozen Mallet and probably skip the Atmos and go for another Magic Resist item. Just because there's no reason to have all that extra damage when you just get melted instantly against the Magic team. 
And that's okay, because usually magic teams are a little squishier, other than that Warwick and maybe Mordekaiser. I don't care, the main problem right now has been that Vygar, so if we can take out Vygar, we pretty much instantly win the game. And I know that, so I'm just going to continue building my magic resist. Probably go for the Banshee's Veil to block that initial stun, and then have Quicksilver Sash in case it gets stunned again. So there we go, I should be solid. We're all grouped again, ready to go in for a fight. Singe is going to run in behind, try and flip the wrong person apparently. He goes for the uh, for the Mordekaiser, not the right one. Vigar being smart stays in the back as he needs to and instantly destroys that Singed who is way too aggressive. He was thinking the right thing, but Fiddlesticks was just not in position yet. Now Fiddlesticks jumps in after he's dead and he's able to put lots of damage, taking out Sona. We get a nice bit of damage onto uh, into the Mordekaiser as well, and I'm able to jump in, kill him very quickly. Vigar once again stays alive. Luckily, he doesn't kill this Raka. She's able to make it out, and we're gonna chase down this Warwick, but he's got a ghost on, so no chance of catching him. Better off for us to just pick up the inhibitor. I'm gonna go ahead and go for this blue buff that should help out. And at this point, I'm not afraid of Vigar at all. I think we might be able to catch him if we can get in range. I'm seeing that he is getting head off by the Fiddlestick, so if Brand keeps chasing him from that direction, Fiddlestick will probably catch him. There you go, on the minimap, you'll see him. He catches him with a fear and takes him out. That's an extra 500 gold for our Fiddlesticks. And so right now, this game is all about that... You know, Singe running there being silly, dying, and Fiddlesticks jumps in behind after those cooldowns are wasted and just destroys everybody. The one thing that I'm worried about is if Vigar instagibs our Fiddlesticks, then that's going to be a little bit problematic for our team. However, up until now, we haven't really been seeing that happen, and that's kind of coming out as an advantage for our team. Since Vigar is really only useful for killing one person, and he's not killing the right person, he's just kind of putting his damage onto whoever may be singed, and, you know, we don't really care if you kill singed. That's kind of what we want. That's what a tank does, you know, and, you know, he has been a little bit too aggressive at the wrong times. But at the same time, they are still taking that bait and using all their cooldowns on him. If they were killing him without using all their cooldowns, then that would be bad. Either way, we are in a pretty good position right now. I don't like what he's doing. Again, he's we're not all grouped up in position and he's trying to go up. But he is being a singe. He's being kind of a dick and that's what you do when you play singe. We're going to pick up a free dragon here and probably get ready to go for Baron, seeing that they're all bottom, and we could potentially get up there and take that quickly now. Unfortunately, the Singe has absolutely no clue what's going on, and he still tries to 1v5 their team. He gets instantly destroyed. We try and do Baron anyways, but we realize they're going to get there and stop us in time. So there's no way we can make that happen. We're going to push back our top lane. And what I'm waiting for is for them to start Baron so I can jump in there with Fiddlesticks' help. If I'm able to jump in there and Fiddlesticks does his ult, we'll probably be able to stop them. So here we go. Fiddlesticks jumps in, makes them all jump backwards. And we actually can pick up the kill on a Baron. So we do pick up the kill on the Baron. And although they're going to kill a few of us, it's not too bad. We take out the Warwick. And I'm going to flash over, saving the Baron buff onto myself. Hopefully the Sorak so will be able to get away. She flashes over, and she might just make it out alive. It's going to be kind of close with that Kakali on her. Nope. I think she probably will go down. I'm just looking on the mini-map. I can't really tell, but she doesn't have anywhere to run, so it's going to be really difficult for her. I'm going to throw it down. It looks like this Mordekaiser gets a little bit out of position. He's acting like Singed now, and he's all by himself, so I'm easily going to be able to take him out. I don't know what he was thinking. That guy is kind of silly. And so that's one extra kill for us. Plus, we have that Baron. We have a really nice advantage right now, regardless of any kind of mistakes that have been happening on our team. They've been making just as many. So here we go. I'm going to jump onto this Vigar. Looks like he puts his stun down, trying to put lots of damage onto that Singe, still focusing him down instead of me. Not really the best idea. I get a little bit low, so I'm going to get the heck out of there. And that Singe is just barely going to make it out alive which is kind of what he's known for doing generally as a champion. Well, not necessarily our Singed. He's known for running in and dying 1v5. But hey, you know, that's the way it goes. So I'm able to pick up my Frozen Mallet. That'll allow me to stick to targets a little bit better and hopefully have just that extra bit of HP plus that Negatron Cloak that I pick up. I'm going to be on my way to a Banshee's Veil. At this point in the game, I don't think they have a chance of winning it. We've already pushed it to 39 minutes, and when you're playing against an all-magic team, the best way to win is just, just to try not to 
feed a lot of kills and wait until late game until you can get those Negatron cloaks and Banshee bills and things like that built up and then you'll be a lot stronger off. So here we go. All we have to do now is survive the Vigar's burst and we'll be fine. I think that while the Vigar is quite fed, he has been making some critical mistakes. He's focusing all the wrong people. He, again, needs to focus down the fiddlesticks instead of our Singed. Every time he blows everything on the Singed, making it easy. Now, I didn't want our team to engage here. I was going to say, hey, let's push the lanes out and I'll go for the towers at the same time. But I guess we are strong enough now. The Fiddlesticks decides to jump in. He is able to make something happen. He takes out the Akali and the Vigar. And that's probably going to be GG for us. So I say, what the heck. I jump in. I know it doesn't really make anything happen. But that's already two kills for us. We're able to easily take this inhibitor. And we'll most likely take the rest of the towers. At least until they get back. And I think that we should be able to take them before the enemy team gets back up. This Mordekaiser is very underfed since the Vyra has been taking all the kills. We flip him out, I stun him, pick up the kill on him. Overall, the Mordekaiser was a non-issue this entire game. I think if Mordekaiser had done really well up top and got fed, it would have been a little bit of a different story for us. But luckily for us, you know, usually whenever you have a bad person on your team, usually the other team's going to have someone bad on their team as well. So I don't really subscribe to that whole ELO hell myth like, oh, I've always got someone bad on my team. Well, that's true. You always will have someone bad on your team. And there we go. I was just trying to get one extra kill. Diving right before the Nexus dies. But anyways, guys, that's my solo queue commentary for Pantheon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to pick this one again because I did make a lot of mistakes. And there was a lot of mistakes to go over. So anyways, be sure to subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more of these every week. So I'll see you guys around next time. Let's go with cheese. Peace out.